Hi, my name is Killian and I'm a fifth semester aerospace engineering student at the Technical University of Munich. Welcome to a new video series where we're going to be showing you around the hallowed halls of the research chairs here at the university. Today we're going to be starting with Professor Drexler and his chair of carbon composites. Always make sure to check the websites of the chairs to figure out how you can get more involved with the research going on here and maybe even work here yourself. I hope you enjoy. Professor Drexler, thank you so much for joining us. Today we're going to be taking a look through the lab. Uh, we talked previously on our podcast where we went deeply into uh, mm -hmm. your past, but also carbon fiber in, in general. Um, today we want to talk more about the ETC in, uh, itself. So when, when was the ETC formed? What, what does the history of this uh, place look like? We have a, a quite new chair, so 14 years ago we started here from, from zero before Carbon composites have only been part of some other lectures and other research topics with Professor Bayer, mm -hmm. for example, at the lightweight design. But now we have the real focus on composite materials mm -hmm. with this quite new chair. Mm -hmm. And what, what's the link between industry and LCC here? I know you also have a, your link to the Fraunhofer mm -hmm. Institute. Mm -hmm. how, how much do you co cooperate with companies in that yes. sense? So we have a very strong cooperation with industry and we're very proud that we have a strong cooperation with small companies. So there's a founding uh, program, it's called ZIM, and I think we are very, very successful. The most successful institute, our chair at the university, working together with small and medium-sized companies. And that's very exciting. So two years normally, project time, so quite quick. And uh, so we can bring our basic know-how really to applications to small companies. But of course, we are also cooperating with BMW, with Airbus, with the big companies, also globally. So industry cooperation is very important for us. And so obviously the LTC is a research chair. Mm -hmm. um, there's other chairs here that perhaps don't have the labs and, and uh, that you do. What, what, does, what do all these labs that we're going to look at in a minute, what does that bring to the LTC? How is that important? So we can work close, very closely to industry. So normally we have a big gap between basic research at the universities, so small machines, only lab scale machines, and then transfer to industry means there's a big gap. And very often this gap cannot be closed. And so all our basic know-how, our research results cannot be transferred to industry. But with our machines we have here, we will see some of them in the lab, not all of them, because we have another location at the Ludwig Bölko campus. So some of our very exciting machines, so big robot-based based fiber placement machines and also 3D printing machines are in Ottobrunn at the Ludwig Bölko campus. But also here we will see a big microwave oven, a big braiding machine. So that's really industrial standard. And I think it's very good also for the students to be educated and trained uh, with really industrial-based machines. I think that's very exciting and yeah, allows the students also to jump into industry with a very good preparation. Great. Mm -hmm. Then on that note, mm -hmm. let's get going. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Okay, so we're standing oh. in the main hall. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. when, when did the LTC first acquire this hall? Uh -huh. Oh, so step by step. <laughs> so when I started several years ago, I brought this braiding machine yeah. because braiding is a little bit of my history. Right. Also in my PhD, I worked on textile structural composites. Yeah. So it's very important to work with the fibers and to um, automate it preforming and so on. This was the starting point. But step by step, we uh, got the microwave curing, we got the robot. We got some devices for injection and infusion technology. So step by step, we brought okay. more and more machines in. Very and we have a very good status now. Great. So let's take a tour. Yeah. It's quite busy, you see. Yeah. So <laughs> we always need more space. Yeah. And so we are happy to have the second lab in Ottobrunn. Yeah. Okay, so now we see here a lot of rolls with a lot of stuff on it. Like stuff, yeah. what's, what's going on here? <laughs> uh -huh. So these are semi-finished products. So we are starting from a so-called roving. That's our carbon fiber um, generated, for example, by SGL or Japanese companies. And the next step, we need sometimes semi-finished products. It can be a woven material, or in this case, it's a so-called non-crimp material. And this is the basis. One part, 
the other part is the resin and in our laboratories we bring both together to yeah, build a lightweight part. Fantastic. And so then we have on one hand these sheets of material and then over here all of a sudden we have this we call it cutter, yes, it's an ultrasonic cutter. So we place these woven uh, preforms, for example, here, and then automatically we can cut preforms. And these are the bases. We put these preforms in a mold, can be also a 3D mold after draping, and then we bring the resin to the part, and then we have the final component. And so I guess this is when it's more important to have an actual structure instead of cutting everything by hand that you yes, want the uh, exact yeah, pieces uh -huh, to fit. Yeah, uh -huh, okay. yeah, uh -huh. wow. Fantastic. Mm -hmm. Okay, so mm -hmm. this is something that looks very interesting. <laughs> yes, what's, uh, okay. what's going on here? Yeah. Uh, it was a student project, or is a student project with several generations of students. But what we are doing here at LCC is, uh, I explained that we have big machines here, industrial-based machines, but there are so many sensitivities being important for a high performance process and product finally. And sometimes it's very beneficial to have a special testing device to study basic sensitivities. For example, the tech, so how the sticky a pre break a material is, or how the uh, infusion is, is going on, how, how the draping is happening. And therefore we are developing such devices to study the basic uh, sensitivities in the process. So more on the topic of sometimes you have to make something yourself yes. that industry just can't make for you. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Fantastic. <laughs> Great. Mm -hmm. So we're still standing in the, in the main hall, but we have some windows here to another room. What's, what's yeah. going on behind yeah. us? Yeah. Alas, a testing lab. So we have to study, for example, the influence of media on composite materials. We have a polymeric matrix. And so we have to study humidity, for example, or temperature resistance. Uh, we have some characteristic topics like uh, the glass transition temperature, and this can be measured with these very special devices here in our chemical laboratory. So more testing on, on that side. Yes. Uh -huh. Yeah. Uh -huh. Okay, so now we're on the bottom floor, and I feel like this is where the real magic happens. Yes. <laughs> yeah. So much more stuff going on. Uh -huh. Um, here on our left, we have a microwave. Yes. Uh -huh. yeah. uh -huh. I guess you wouldn't specifically say carbon fiber microwave. What's, what's the connection uh, there? Uh, oh, that was very, very basic stuff. We developed this technology together with the physical department at the Forschungszentrum Karlsruhe. Mm -hmm. That was at my time in Stuttgart. And you see all long-term developments. Mm -hmm. And now we have the most modern microwave oven in the world, I assume. And so what's happening here is that we cure the matrix in the oven and it's very efficient because we do not have to uh, heat up the whole tool and the whole part but we bring the energy and the heat to the polymer mm -hmm. where we need it okay. and uh, that sounds easy but it's very tricky because a microwave to control uh, everything is quite complex and therefore we have this co uh, cooperation with the physics at uh, the Forschungszentrum Karlsruhe and we have a nice machine now <laughs> and we are using for our research. And so now I, I realize I'm standing in front of this mm. humongous machine. What's, yes, what's yes. going on behind yeah. us? Yeah, that's a braiding machine. Yeah. And uh, I think it's exciting to have a braiding machine in a composite lab. But is, it isn't because we have to work with fibers. And you see here a lot of these carbon fibers arranged on the bobbins in the braiding machines. And we have the combination here with a robot. And this robot is handling a mandrel through this, we call it braiding point, where all fibers come together and then the fibers are arranged around this mandrel and we can fully automatically uh, build so-called preforms. That's the first step. Preform is a texti textile part, textile component, where the fibers are arranged uh, according to the fiber orientation, according to the thickness. And yeah, the braiding machine allows us especially to form hollow parts mm -hmm. for bicycle, for example, or for rocket, or so many, many applications. And then if, if we continue in this direction, mm -hmm. right now, not much going on, but there's a set, a lot of moving parts. What's, <laughs> what's going on here? Yeah, that's a so-called filament winding machine. So we use it uh, now for several projects together with students and uh, with industry to build pressure vessels for hydrogen storage. Mm -hmm. And so what's happening here is that again, we have a carbon fiber. But in this case, we are not placing it in a dry configuration, like in the braiding machine. But before, we place the carbon fiber or feed it through a resin bath. 
and then we have a wet roving and this wet roving is then placed on the mandrel, for example a liner for this pressure vessel. And it's again fully automated, uh, quite old technology, mm -hmm. but we added a lot of know-how regarding the optimization design for example, to build the dome of these pressure vessels. And uh, again, it's very important to have a good design for yeah, weight saving potential. And so how does this compare to, let's say, the newer technologies of uh, ATL and uh, automatic tape layering, yes, uh -huh, yeah, uh -huh. where you have a lot more, let's say, three-dimensional freedom. Yeah, uh -huh. how, how does this stay uh -huh. still stay relevant with that yeah, new technology? Uh -huh, yeah. It's a quite cheap machine. It's quite simple technology, it's a high volume technology, and so it's not necessary here to have a robot to place the fibers. This is more important for more complex parts. So it's still very useful, even if it's a quite old technology. We still use it and combine it with new design. Very good. Okay, so now we're standing in front of a very long machine. Yes. Uh -huh. what's, what's going on here? It's our most modern machine. We are very proud and happy to have this Taubrek machine. Uh, so far we talked about dry fibers, the braiding, the preform, and then mixing on the component level together with the resin. What we are doing here is to create our own semi-finished products, our own tape. And this tape can be used, for example, for automated fiber placement in a robot. And here with this machine we can, can control everything. We can bring fibers together, we can spread the fibers, we can bring it together with several types of resin. And so it's a very unique machine and I think the only machine of this type uh, being uh, established uh, in a testing lab, in, in a university lab. And so what, what would be some challenges that we face here when we're create, dealing with production of a prepreg material? Uh -huh. Yeah. So it has to be very homogeneous, so the spreading is a challenge to bring the resin together and we are working with a lot of several types of resins with several viscosity and we can control in this machine everything and yeah, generate high performance uh, pre prepack parts for our fiber placement technologies. Okay, so now we've formed the, the product itself, but we want to cure it. Yes. So how does this machine here help us do uh -huh. that? Yeah. So we started, uh, I explained, with the braiding machine, we have a dry preform. We have the dry fibers, we arrange it to a preform, and that's now dry, it's just carbon fiber. And we have to bring the resin, for example, an epoxy resin, together in infusion injection technologies, and therefore we have several devices here. We have an ultrasonic mixer, for example, to mix uh, several components of the resin together, and then to infuse or inject with temperature and vacuum, this preform, and then we have the final part after the curing. And therefore we have here several devices, this hot press for, for flat parts, we have also a big oven uh, where we can really cure very big parts, for example small components of a, of a plane or of a car, and so we cure the parts and then we have the final component. And so when it comes to the vacuum itself, mm -hmm. why is that important when I'm creating a part and I want to cure it. Uh -huh. Why is it important to pull the vacuum there? Yeah. Uh -huh. So what we try to have a five fiber volume fraction because the component bringing a good performance in the part is the fiber. And therefore we try to bring at least 50, 60% fibers uh, in the volume. And the rest is matrix and some voids we try to, to avoid. <laughs> and therefore we need vacuum and uh, temperature and pressure to build the part, to consolidate it, and to have a high fiber volume fraction with low void content. Fantastic. So we're standing at the back of the lab now. Yeah. Uh -huh. We've dealt with all the big machines, mm -hmm. but every workshop has to have some yes, tools. Yes. So <laughs> yeah, what's, uh -huh. what's the importance of having this part uh -huh. integrated into, into the workshop? So mainly two tasks. Uh, one is we are building our own tools. So to place the fibers, uh, our final part, we need a tool and this tool is milled normally uh, of a plastic material or metal and so tooling uh, manufacturing is one part and the other part is uh, machining. So machining of final parts, so normally when it comes from the tool it's not really finished. So we have to cut some edges for example or drill holes and so a mechanical laboratory is very very important for us. And so just in the overall having a, a lab like this. How do student initiatives and student groups 
how do they benefit from all of this existing at the Etsy? Uh -huh, yeah. So we c they have access to our machines, of course, after some, some training, but we are very happy and proud to work together with our students' groups. Uh, and you see a lot of parts here, uh, if you walk through the laboratory for Arcafleek or for uh, Hyperloop or for other projects. And so they, of course, can also benefit from our equipment. Okay, so now we have a lot of small machines, <laughs> very different from what we saw before. Yeah. What's, uh -huh. what's going on here? Yeah, that's 3D printing. Uh, and I think it's very exciting. All these 3D printing, 3D printers have been designed by students yeah. in their project. So all the mechanical devices, the control, everything has been realized by students because 3D printing is very exciting because we need the mechanical devices and we need the control, the software and it has to be brought together and that's a specific know-how we are training and uh, we are educating our students in a special lab and it's very exciting and these are the machines and they are still printing their parts. Uh, and so we have small machines, we have bigger mm -hmm. machines behind mm -hmm. us all around us. Yeah. Uh -huh. why, why the need for different well, mm -hmm. sizes? Mm -hmm. and yeah. uh -huh. But yeah. do they differentiate just in size or their uh -huh. capabilities as well? Uh, both. So the, the biggest machines we have again in Ottobund, Ludwig Belko campus, it's a huge uh, robot based fiber placement machine or 3D printing machine in this case. And we, here we have so medium sized machines. Uh, our mission and our vision is to bring endless carbon fibers in the 3D printing projects, uh, process. That's not state of the art. Normally we are using just plastics, just the metrics or short fibers. But if you bring long fibers in the 3D printing process, we have a high performance component finally. And the vision, of course, is to use 3D printed parts directly in applications in aerospace or in space especially. And we are working on this to place the fibers in 3D mode without a tool before. And again, we need this control, we need the computers, we need the basic understanding of the topology, how to optimize the shape, how to optimize the fiber architecture, and to realize it in these machines. So now we're standing in the CTL, which stands for Composite Testing Lab. Yes. Uh, what, yeah, uh -huh. what goes on over here? Yeah, uh -huh. What we are doing here is mechanical characterization of composite materials. So we're characterizing stiffness, strength, energy absorbing behavior. That's very important for the design of composite materials, but also for the development of processes, for example. Because during the process, we bring fibers and metrics together. We can control the fiber architecture. We can control fiber volume fraction. And afterwards, we have to characterize, have we done the right setup during the processing? And so we have here some standard testing machines, so for tensile and compression testing, but we are also doing uh, real basic research here. And we are very happy that we have one of a very unique testing device, we call it Split Hopkinson Bar. So, and we characterize the strain rate dependent behavior of composite materials, because what we learned is that the mechanical performance of composite materials uh, is influenced by the testing speed. And for example, when we are crashing an aircraft, we had a nice project together with Aka Fleek on gliders. And so it's important for the design that we really select and choose the right parameters. And at high speed, high speed crash, for example, or impacts, we need to characterize the material. And we are doing this on small specimens to generate a basic understanding. And then we transfer it to numerical simulations, for example. Okay. So, so this is the part of the lab where mm -hmm. we've come with the finished material and now we have to figure out yes, what, no, what's yeah. actually happening at that. Part or, or specimen yeah. testing panel and it's part of our testing lab. Another testing lab is focusing on chemical and uh, media testing but here it's the mechanical characterization. Great. So we're standing in the microscope room. Um, why is it important for the LTT to have uh, access to microscopes? Yeah so composite materials are consisting of fibers and metrics. Sometimes we have voids in, we have a fiber matrix uh, interface, and all these uh, factors are characterizing uh, composite materials and uh, are important for the mechanical performance of the material. And therefore, it's very important to have a detailed look into the microstructure, for example, to examine fiber matrix interface. And this shows if our process was really with the right configuration, and therefore we are happy 
to have these microscopes here. And so especially with carbon composites and things like that, the failures really happen at very local places. Yes, yeah, uh -huh, so yeah, mm -hmm. how does this interact with the CTL um, that we looked at before? Yeah. Uh, it both belongs together. Yeah. So uh, at the CTL, we have, for example, the stiffness and strength data mm -hmm. for the design. And here we have the basic understanding what is happening during the failure, for example, of a composite material. So we need both to characterize the material for the basic understanding. We talked about industry, we talked about um, student initiatives. Where do startups come into play? Yeah. Uh, so we are very happy that we have in the meantime, I think, 10 spin-offs right, at LCC. The first one was Muni Composites. You see here in our laboratory and uh, in the office is a lot of bicycle parts, rims and frames, for example. And that's their business. They are using, for example, our braiding technology to produce a high volume uh, bicycle parts. That is one spin-off, but there are several others. And we have also here some part of our activities together with the students, as well as the students' projects. We are producing every year dozens of boards together with the students mm -hmm. to train them, to give them access to our machines, to our know-how in students' projects. But we are also working together with industry uh, in composite parts. You see an energy absorbing structure and if you have a detailed look, you again see the braiding technology here. It's a braided part mainly to yeah, allow a high energy absorbing capability. You see a big tool that was also a project, an aerospace funded project together with some partners, mainly Airbus, where we produced a tool. And very important for us is more and more the 3D printing technologies. These machines are not here, but they are mainly at uh, the Ludwig Belko campus because we always run out of space. We have so many ideas for our projects and we need space, we need machines. And therefore we are very happy that you have the Ludwig Belko campus and we have, have hope that we can extend it together with the other chairs. Right. And so we, we talked previously a bit about how there's this part here in Gassing, but there's the other campus also in Taufkirchen. Mm -hmm. Um, with all the machines that you've got going on now, what's what's missing? What would you like more? What what other machine would you like to add to the uh -huh. uh -huh. I think the, uh, mainly to have all the models, models, uh, most modern versions of, of the machines. I think we have nearly everything we need in composite technologies for high performance composites. Of course, there are other composite machines for high volume production of automotive parts, but we are focusing on endless fibers and I think we uh, really have everything. But we have to add more and more facilities to these basic machines to bring it to an actual and industrial status. Well, Professor Resta, thank you very much for walking mm -hmm. us through here. And thank you. we'll see uh, you around. Thank, thank you. you very much. Uh, thank you. Well, that's about it. Thanks for watching. Let us know what you thought about this video. And we'll see you around on campus.